moms, dads, and new additions. Deliveries in homes, birthing centers, and most commonly in hospitals. Some women choose to give birth in a hospital. Others don't, but wind up there due to complications. Either way, the sources we spoke with and recent data from the CDC suggest there are several ways hospitals can work to prevent maternal mortality and the near misses. 60% of these deaths are preventable. That means there are often a series of red flags for care providers to look for. We went in for what was supposed to be a routine scheduled C-section on what was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives and we walked right into what was a nightmare. This is Charles Johnson. His wife, Kira, died after delivering their second child. He testified before a House committee about the Preventing Maternal Deaths Act, which was signed into law in 2018. Hey, Mom. Hi, Daddy. Johnson said his late wife was in exceptional health before the delivery. It was a different story after her C-section. Kira's resting, my new baby is resting, and as I look at her bedside, I begin to see the catheter begin to turn red with blood. According to court documents, this happened at 5 p.m. It wasn't until after midnight that they finally took my wife back to surgery. They opened her up and there were three and a half liters of blood in her abdomen and she coded immediately. Johnson is suing the hospital for wrongful death and negligent infliction of emotional distress. That lawsuit is still pending, but the Medical Board of California found Kira's doctor to be grossly negligent and put him on probation for four years. The hospital declined to comment on this specific case due to privacy laws. Change is coming. Now Johnson advocates for changes to maternal health policies. One of those policy changes include maternal safety bundles. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists is the lead partner of a program called AIM, the Alliance for Innovation on Maternal Health. The program offers qualified states and hospitals across the country what it calls bundles. They're described as small, straightforward sets of practices that can help improve patient outcomes. Newsy couldn't independently verify whether the use of an AIM bundle would have saved Kira's life. But sitting alongside Johnson was Dr. Lynn Kozlet charlton an OBGYN and member of ACOG. They both spoke about the overall importance of these evidence-based bundles. If we're able to roll them out across the country and really see where we can use best practices to prevent things from happening that couldn't otherwise. And the problem is these bundles are just suggestions. As long as we have these tools that are a suggestion and they're not a protocol, women are going to continue to pass away. At the time of this reporting, ACOG told Newsy 27 states and just over 1,200 hospitals are part of the AIM program. The now former ACOG vice president of health policy said the goal is to expand the program to 35 states. States and eligible hospitals who want to participate in the program need a Maternal Mortality Review Committee, or MMRC. These committees are made up of multidisciplinary experts who read cases, like Kira's, and come up with ways a death could have been prevented. So far, MMRCs from nine states found assessments, diagnoses, and treatment decisions need standardization, especially for moms in emergency settings. So hospitals having clear policies so that emergency departments are able to identify pregnant and postpartum. I'm using postpartum to mean up to one year post-pregnancy. So that when these women are coming into the emergency room, we're able to identify them. One way a hospital can do this is by working with a state-based perinatal quality collaborative, or PQC, a resource that can be backed by the CDC. The collaborative can come into hospitals to both identify and address factors that can lead to maternal mortality. Sometimes they also help support AIM program bundles. But maternal deaths can occur even after delivery. In fact, 33% happen a week to a year postpartum. That means hospitals need to strengthen their efforts in coordinating care with primary care providers. A CDC vital signs report says hospitals should make sure new moms are connected with a primary care or obstetrical provider and schedule a postpartum visit before they're even discharged. Care coordination can include telephone calls, home visits, making sure and na helping that patient navigate through the complex medical system. While these solutions may get at physical problems behind maternal mortality, there may also be more nuanced matters that need attention. Increasing access to substance use and mental health services 
for both pregnant and postpartum women, it needs to be a priority. We can't fall back on there was lack of access. And when it comes to paying for all of these services? It was recommended that we should expand Medicaid eligibility from that postpartum 60 days to one year. At the time of this reporting, the Kaiser Family Foundation said 36 states and D.C. have extended postpartum coverage under the Affordable Care Act past the 60-day mark. But 14 states still stick to the 60-day plan. In these states, moms would have to requalify to get extended coverage. Now, there is one area where hospitals could potentially do less, cesarean sections. According to a CDC National Vital Statistics report, C-section delivery rates rose to 32% in 2017, after four years of declines. The top reasons hospitals opt for C-sections are labor arrest, abnormal fetal heart rate tracing, and malpresentation. To be clear, there are cases when the best delivery option is a C-section, like for women aged 40 and over, moms who have delivered by C-section before, or when a woman's mental health requires it. The procedure can be crucial, but there's a problem that caught Akon's eye. OBGYNs use C-sections to save a mom, baby, or both. But as the rate of their use rises, maternal and infant mortality isn't falling. It's an observation that led ACOG to say C-sections may be overused. And in 2016, ACOG published a consensus saying for most low-risk pregnancies, cesarean delivery posed a greater risk of maternal mortality than vaginal delivery. We are incredibly blessed to have Western medicine. The challenge is there is a convenience versus necessity. It's a challenge that can only be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. But with the help of clear protocols, standardized protocols, hospitals can have more support to make the right call for a mom in need.